Today's video is going to be talking about whitetail deer hunting versus mule deer hunting and what different strategies you can employ to be successful while hunting each different species. First thing we have to talk about is how to identify either species in the field and what are some key things to look for. The second thing is how to locate that species in a landscape, where to look for them in the topography and what food sources they might be looking at. And the third thing is once you've located them, how to adjust your hunting strategy for that animal. Now, to start out with, it might be a bit, a bit rudimentary, but let's talk about the differences between these two animals and how to identify one from the other in the field. I know when I started, I actually found it difficult to correctly and easily identify a mule deer versus a white-tailed deer in the field. So let's talk about four main things that you can look at when you're trying to figure out whether you're looking at a white-tailed deer or a mule deer. The number one is the butt. That's the main thing you want to look at. Mule deer have a white rump with a small white tail with a black tip on the end. So if you're looking at the back end of a mule deer, it is white. Sort of counterintuitively, a white-tailed deer, when you're looking at its back end, is actually brown. They have a big white tail, and the other underside of the tail is white, and so when they run or raise their tail, you see that big white tail. But when they're relaxed, their tail is down, and it covers their whole butt. So their butt is brown. So if you're looking at a deer in the field, and you see their back end, white butt means mule deer, Brown butt means white-tailed deer. Three other things that you can look at that are the size of their ears. Mule deer are called mule deer because they have big ears like a mule. But to be honest with you, they don't look big on the deer compared to a white-tailed deer unless you're looking at them together. If you were to take a picture of a white-tailed deer and a mule deer, you would clearly see that a mule deer's ears are bigger. But in the field, it's going to be hard to say, oh, those are definitely a mule deer's ears. Another distinguishing feature is the color of the coat. White-tailed deer are more of a brownish red, and mule deer are more of a or more of a gray with a bit of black in their coat. So it's mule deer are gray, white-tailed deer are brown. That's sort of the just as simple as it could get. You could characterize it in those two color patterns. Lastly, is that the the shape of the mule deer versus white-tailed deer antlers are actually quite different. White-tailed deer have one main beam that comes out and then tines that branch off that main beam. So it's sort of one and then one out like this and then tines coming up. Whereas mule deer have forked beams. The, the beam comes out and then it forks into two four points. And if you're looking at a mature whitetail buck versus a mature mule deer buck, it's very clear to distinguish which antlers are which. But if you're looking at an immature buck, like a spike buck, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between the antlers because the antlers haven't fully developed to show their true shape. Or if you're looking at a doe, there's no antlers and you can't tell. So if you're in a position to shoot a deer and you, you need to identify it, I would wait until that deer turns around and gives me a clear look at its butt and I know whether or not I'm looking at a white butt or a brown butt. Mule deer's territory is basically the western half of North America and white-tailed deer inhabit that entire, that entire portion of the continent as well. So their territory overlaps and in fact at my home in my yard I will have white-tailed deer in the yard on Saturday and mule deer in the yard on Sunday. So they're, they very much overlap and you will see those deer in the same places quite often in certain, in certain landscapes. So it may seem like you don't really have to adjust your hunting strategies based on mule deer versus white-tailed deer, but that's not entirely true. Although you will see them overlapping and in times you will see them in the same crop field, maybe half a kilometer apart, there still can be in various landscapes differences in the way they feed, where they will be in that landscape, and how you should adjust your hunting style depending on which deer that you're after. What I mean by that is that if you have a landscape that is, has varied topography, you might always find the mule deers on, say, an, on a hill eating sagebrush or something like that, and you might always find the white-tailed deer on the river bottoms or creek bottoms or something like that. So they're close by, but they're inhabiting different sort of portions of that landscape and you want to drill down and figure out what those differences are because that is where you want to hunt. If you have a, if you have a tag for a mule deer, you don't necessarily want to be hunting the river bottoms where only the white tail are going to be. You want to identify where the mule deer are on that particular patch of habitat. And one of the better ways to do that is identify the food sources that the mule deer are targeting versus what the white-tailed deer are targeting. What complicates this is that, of course, mule deer and white-tailed deer can eat similar foods, but white-tailed deer are more likely to eat grasses, and mule deer are more likely to eat brushes and shrubs and sort of new growth and shoots. Now, if you could do this and you really wanted to hone in on this, I would actually phone a fish and wildlife officer or conservation officer in your particular area and get that person to identify what mule deer eat in that area versus what white-tailed deer eat in that area. And then you can identify those plants and then start to look for them where you're hunting. A good example of this would be on the prairies where white-tailed deer are less likely to eat sagebrush and mule deer do eat quite a bit of sagebrush. So when I'm out scouting, I would be looking for patches of sagebrush if I was out for mule deer and 
patches of fresh grasses if I was out for white-tailed deer. Once I've identified those food sources, I can start to target my scouting and hunting in those areas based on what they are, what they are eating. And if there's no conservation officer that is able to help you in your area, pick up a book on deer for your state or your province, and there will be such a thing, that gives you a list of what foods mule deer or white-tailed deer eat in your state or your province. Then identify those plants and go out and look for those plants where you're going to hunt, and that will help you identify where you're likely to see those deer. These deer, their habitat can overlap, their foods can overlap, their behaviors can overlap. But from my experience, mule deer like higher ground, for example, being at on the side of a hill or even at the top of a hill at times, and white-tailed deer like lower ground, for example, like a, like a creek bottom or, or the bottom of a valley or something like that. So that is sort of where I would typically expect to see them. And in fact, where I hunt in the foothills, there's a ranch that I always hunt on, and the mule deer are always on one particular hill, year after year after year after year, right at the top of the hill. And the white-tailed deer are sort of on other hills, but more at the bottom, more closer to the forest, where they're sort of coming out, you know, maybe just 50 meters or something like that from the edge of the forest. And the mule deer are much more open, much farther away from the forest and sort of on, on higher ground. So that is a pretty typical behavior for both deers. And that's not just in the foothills, that would sort of go for anywhere, that the mule deer will be higher in the, in the landscape and white-tailed deer will be lower. And that could, they might only be a kilometer apart, but that's where you'll find them in the, in the, in the topography of the landscape. Other interesting differences between the two species of deer, which I find, is that mule deer typically feed and travel in larger groups. It would be, wouldn't be uncommon to see a group of six or eight or ten mule deer does, and often you could expect to see juvenile bucks in that group as well. What I mean by that is you could see a, um, oh, got a visitor. Um, you could see a group of does, say five does, and a two and a half year old or three and a half year old mule deer buck. And that's not something that's very typical with white tail with white tailed deer. More often you see bucks all white tailed bucks all by themselves and never with a group of does, unless of course it's 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 the rut and they're trying to breed those does. Mule deer, you will find bigger groups of deer and you will find more bucks in with groups of does. So you can expect while you're mule deer hunting to see more mule deer in a group and less white-tailed deer in a group. Furthermore, mule deer are typically less tame and I actually find easier to hunt. They're more likely to run a short distance and then stop and look back to see what that danger is. And white-tailed deer are more likely to see danger and then run and, and, and they're gone and never, and never really stop to give you that stop and look back to see what that danger is. Mule deer typically are an easier deer to hunt because they are less furtive, less skittish, and less close to forests or patches of cover, I find. Hey guys, hope you liked the video. If you have any questions or anything else you wanna know, put them in the comments below and we will put in another video answering all your questions. We wanna be the best resource for deer hunting out there on the internet, on YouTube, and we'll continue to put out great content, so please subscribe below.